So now I'm going to take the friction off. So now we are going to have friction. Let's uh, say the coefficient of friction equals 0 0.30 again. This is our kinetic coefficient of friction. Now there is a case where if this friction was high enough and the angle was low enough that things would not move. We're not going to consider that scenario. We're assuming that this mass is big enough that it's going to, and this angle is, um, this angle is big enough that it won't, uh, the friction, well, the friction is small enough it's not going to cause this thing to stop. So this is the previous free body diagram we had. The only difference is that now we're going to have this friction force acting here, which is going to oppose the motion. So I have one more unknown, and that goes right here, and it's going to go in the negative x direction. This one stays the same. The normal force is still the same. But we are going to use this because I have this one extra equation. Uh, I end up with one extra, un I mean, I have one extra unknown, so I'm going to need one more equation. And this is the vertical element, which doesn't change because there's no friction involved in at all. So I'm going to write, write the two equations. I'm not, I'm not going to just copy what I did before. So we have m1 times w sub x, no, sorry, a sub x1 is equal to the tension minus w sub x1 minus the friction force. So I've got that one extra term on there. And the second equation is from the second object. So this is the difference of the friction force. So the unknown, the knowns are masses, the angle theta, and the coefficient of friction. The unknowns, which are not specified but can be calculated, are a sub x1, a sub y2, t, w sub x1, friction force, and W is 2. So now I have six unknowns and only two equations. But all the other equations are the same uh, pretty much. What we knew is, so let's, let's go here, W2, so let me write the number of these, 1, 2, 3, W2 is equal to M2 times G, so there's one more equation. Um, w sub x is equal to W times the sine of theta. But that introduced another unknown, so I'll write that down. So now we need seven equations. So W, this is W1. W1 is equal to M1 times G. Now we have the friction equation, which says that the coefficient of friction is the ratio of these two. Oh, got another unknown here. So the, uh, let's do the acceleration one. So a sub x1 is equal to negative a sub y2. So my last equation is from the sum of the forces in the y direction. which said that the normal force is equal to W sub Y1. Okay, I got another unknown, W sub Y1. But W sub Y1, or 1Y, this Y1. Not sure which way I did it. W sub Y1 is equal to W1 times the cosine of theta. I know theta, I know W1. So now I have I have everything I need. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine unknowns, nine equations. Again, it's not as daunting as it seems. You just have to make some substitutions. So um, this is W sub Y. So 
So I can plug that in there. So I know that the normal force is W sub Y1, but that's W1, W1 times cosine of theta. But W1 is equal to M1G n times the cosine of theta, which I can plug in to here. Actually, what I'm going to do is solve for uh, the friction force. It's equal to mu times the normal force. But the normal force is equal to M1G cosine of theta. Okay, I'm going to plug that one in there. Uh, W1 goes there, so I can say W sub X1 is W1, but that's M1G sine of theta. So let's draw some arrows now. So this that's going to go here. Uh, this is going to go. It's going to go there. T I don't solve for, and W two goes there. So I think once I make all the substitutions, I'm going to have two equations, and I'm going to do it right down here so I can see it all. So I'm going to have m1 a sub x1 is equal to t minus w sub x1, but that is m1 g sine of theta. So that's that part, minus the friction force, which is equal to mu m1 g cosine of theta. So that's the first equation, and then this, so that's equation one rewritten. And then I'm going to have, uh, okay, I need to also um, do this acceleration substitution, which I didn't do yet. So I'm going to have m1 times a sub x1, which is equal to negative a sub y2. Okay, now, second equation, m2 a sub y2 is equal to t minus w2, but w2, the weight is m2 times g. So those are the two equations, and I've got two unknowns, acceleration and tension. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to solve the second equation for tension. That'll be m1 a sub y2 plus m2 times g. And then I plug that into here first equation, so the first equation becomes, so this is the second equation rewritten, first equation becomes minus m1a sub y2 is equal to the tension, but the tension is m1a sub y2 plus m, is that right, or is it, yeah, a sub y2, um, plus m2g, and then I have these terms there m1g sine theta minus mu times m1g cosine theta. Now, I'm trying to solve for a sub y2, so I'm going to move this to the other side. So I'll get negative m1a sub y2 minus m1, oh, something wrong here. I think I messed up with the, Oh, this should be M2. So that's M2. So that's M2. So this is M2. A sub Y2 is equal to M2G minus M1G sine theta minus mu M1G cosine theta. So I factor out the unknown. Again, I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to change the sign of these. Everything, I'm going to change the sign of everything. So these will become positive and that will become negative. So I'll have M1 G sine of theta plus mu M1 G cosine of theta minus M to G. And then I divide by the term in the parentheses. So I'll, the numerator will be just the right hand side.
the denominator would be the sum of the masses. So again, the denominator is the total inertia of the system. And the numerator, you've got, this is wanting to make the thing drop. These two things are slowing it down. One is, is the mass of the object and its corresponding weight in the x direction. And this is the friction, which is also obvious, acting to slow it down. So if we, uh, what do we do? If we let theta equals zero, what happens? Well, the sine of theta equals zero and the cosine of theta equals one. So under those conditions, we get, this term goes to zero, we get mu m1g minus m2g over m1 plus m2. This is a case that we looked at with the flat table, and you'll find out that it's exactly the same equation we started, we ended up with in that simpler case. Um, if theta equals 90, the sine of theta equals 1 and the cosine of theta equals 0. So this term goes to 0, and we just end up with a sub y is equal to m1g minus m2g divided by m1 plus m2. And so this is that Atwood's machine, with the two masses hanging over a pulley. And the friction doesn't come into play because the normal force is zero. So you know, even though there might be something there, it's never touching, it's touching force is zero. So it ends up reverting back. So the case with friction or no friction, the Atwood's machine, unless you push one of those masses against something to create some friction, it's not going to have any friction. So you can see we're getting more general as we go along. Uh, what is, what's, what more stuff could I do here to make it even more general? Well, I could have this mass, instead of hanging, I could have it on another plane that's at an angle. So that, and then you could have that without friction or with friction. Uh, we don't need to get that complicated. But the basic idea applies for all situations. You do the free body diagrams for both the masses. The connection is the tension and the acceleration. When we do Newton's second law, we end up with two equations, but usually a lot of unknowns. So then we have to see what we don't know and then use things such as the weight is equal to the mass times g, that the x and y components on a plane are the weight times the sine of theta and weight times the cosine of theta. We need to, we use the fact that the accelerations are the same magnitude, but possibly the same or different signs, depending on how we define the coordinate system. We relate the normal force to the friction force through the coefficient of friction. And um, so that's how it works. So let's look at a special, let's look at the case. Let's just put some numbers in here. <laughs> I don't think we actually ran a theta. So let's theta equal uh, 25 degrees. Mu is equal to 0 0.30. M1 equals 2 kilograms. M2 is equal to 5 kilograms. So the acceleration, again, should be less than 9.8 or more between negative 9.8 and 0. Okay, so we have M1, which is 2 kilograms, times G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the sine of 25 degrees, plus coefficient of friction, times M1, times G. I'm going to leave the units off because I'm running out of space here at the cosine of 25 degrees minus M2, which is 5 kilograms, times G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's the numerator. And I divide that by the sum of the two masses again. So this should be even smaller than we had before, because it's all things that kind of slow things down. So 
2 times 9.8 times the sine of 25 degrees plus 0.3 times 2 times 9.8 times the cosine of 25 degrees minus 5 times 9.8. It's negative 35.4 divided by 7, the sum of the masses, and I get the acceleration is negative 5.1 meters per second squared. So I think we had seven. <coughs> we had a friction, we went down to six, and then we had the inclined plane, which decreases it even more, because we also have to overcome gravity on the, on the mass M1.